This is Libre Quest. My name is Matt. It is the 28th of October, 2019. The first news article that I have today is from news.softpedia.com. This article written by Marius Nestor, posted October 28, 2019. Ubuntu 20.04 LTS, Focal Fusa, is now officially open for development. Canonical is officially open today. The development cycle of the upcoming Ubuntu 20.04 LTS operating system series, which is expected to be released next spring. Ubuntu 20.04 LTS will be the next long-term supported version of the world's most popular GNU slash Linux distribution, slated for release April 23rd, 2020. It's dubbed Focal Fusa to keep it in tone with the FOSS movement and will most probably ship with well-tested components. If you're interested in reading more of that article, it is on Softpedia, and it will be linked wherever this episode is posted. The next article, Pharonix, written by Michael Larabel. I'm sorry, this is on Pharonix.com. It was posted the 26th of October. Linux 5.5 bringing a new System76 ACPI driver for their core boot enabled laptops. Slated for introduction with the upcoming Linux 5.5 kernel is a System76 ACPI driver needed for their new laptops that are now shipping with an open source core boot firmware implementation. That's exciting news. Very cool effort over there by System76. So for the historical article today, it's going to be from Ubuntu-news.org. Today in October, in um, 2012, almost said today in October, but that's I guess that would be correct as well. Today, October 28, 2012, Ubuntu 11.04 Netty Narwhal, Netty Narwhal end of life reached today. So this is a note just to confirm that the support period for Ubuntu 11.04 formally ends on October 28, 2012, and Ubuntu security notices no longer includes information or update updated packages for Ubuntu 11.04. So that's what happened today in 2012. Okay, so what I'm talking about here today is I have a computer that my youngest brother gave me and I thought, you know what, I'm going to put some Linux on there and get it working because he had given it to me and told me that it was trash and he was going to pitch it in the garbage. So he said, you know, if anybody can get it working, I bet you could get it working. So I accepted the challenge. I said, yeah, let me have it. I'll, I'll see if I can uh, see if I can do that. And this was, oh, it's been almost a year ago, probably. And so I ran into some issues with it, and I could not get anything to install on it. And then I finally, with uh, some research, realized that it had a 32-bit EFI and a 64-bit processor. So there was a little bit of uh, issues there uh, just using a standard installer from a Linux distribution because of the 32-bit EFI. So I shelved it. And I recently pulled it off the shelf. I'm like, you know, what? I'm going to get this going because it's for my son. So now what I like to do for my kids is I like to give them a laptop with G Compre and Potato Guy. And I figured these are two good tools. A Potato Guy mostly to get the to get my kids used to interfacing with a personal computer using a mouse and a touchpad and a keyboard and just familiarizing themselves with the drag and drop functionality of a personal computer. And then Gcompre because it really helps them with learning colors, numbers, music, maths, and several other really cool things. It's just a really great program. If you have little kids and you want to help them get familiarized with computers, with computing in general, then I think that's a really good place to start as far as uh, free software goes. And so that's what I do. My my uh, oldest, she has an... It is an Acer Aspire 1 A0722 and then my second um, oldest child my other daughter she has a triple E PC I believe it's a 1005 HA I think is the model number on that but that's a that's a really great little computer actually it's, it's really even if uh, you know even if you're a grown-up uh, it's really cool because it's small and the battery la lasts for a really long time it's just a really cool little system so that's what she has and so I wanted to get this one all set up for my son. And yeah, I had that issue, but I figured, you know, I'll get it out. So I wanted to go through the steps today of what it took to get Linux running on that machine, uh, just because it is a little bit frustrating. So the model number is the 
Asus Triple eBook X205T. And this also applies to the X205TA. So just a little bit about the system. It shipped with uh, Windows 8.1. Uh, has an 11.6 inch display and a resolution of 1366 by 768. It's got an Intel Atom 4 core 4 thread. It operates at uh, 1.33 gigahertz and boost up to 1.83. It's got two gigabytes of DDR3L RAM, and the L is for low power. Uh, and it ships with the Bay Trail uh, Z3735 processor. So I believe this was released in the beginning of 2015. So it's it's an older system, but it's not that old. Um, so you know, it's it's not a very <laughs> it's not a very good system really. Uh, but for you know what I'm using it for for my for my kids, you know I think it's it's uh, it's just fine. You know it works just fine uh, for that purpose. Or you know if if you're just looking for something small, or you happen to have one and and you've had the same frustrations that I've had in trying to get Linux installed on it, then hopefully this will help. Uh, so, oh and yeah, I wanted to note uh, to uh, also make a note that uh, the raffle item I do a raffle uh, once a week. Uh, for a different item, you can join over on Subscribestar. It's a dollar a month, and you could possibly win this raffle item, which is Tomb Raider Chronicles. That's what it's going to be till the end of this week, and it is a game that came out in the year 2000. It was released by Eidos, and it's a pretty fun game. So if you're interested in that, you can join over on Subscribestar for that. So let's get into this laptop. So basically, I had issues getting just about every distribution to boot, so I ended up going 32-bit uh, on it. Uh, just because of the EFI. Oh, and it's missing the Windows key, which I thought was really awesome because it's a pretty rough shape. But the first thing you want to do in the BIOS, you just hit Escape until you can get into the BIOS. Just make sure that you're uh, set to EHCI uh, for USB, and then in Security that Secure Boot is disabled, and that, uh, and then after that, when you reboot after you save those settings, you should be able to hit uh, Escape and get a boot menu and load from your USB. So one thing that I did do after installation was I enabled the non-free repositories and I was able to install firmware-realtek, that's R-E-A-L-T-E-K, and installing that package enabled me to turn Bluetooth on uh, so that I could get sound off the machine because the sound card doesn't work. I also tested GLX gears and I got 60 frames per second, which is, is fine, which just says, you know, the, the GPU is working fine. So... Yeah, it's not a terrible system, but you know, it has these issues. The sound doesn't work. So my workaround for that was enabling Bluetooth using the firmware package from the non-free repositories. And the distribution that I installed was Debian. It's a Debian 10, 32-bit. And the reason I went with 32-bit is because the system only has two gigs of RAM. And, you know, it's just there's no real reason to run 64-bit. I mean, I guess you can. There's no reason really not to or to but you know it's only two gigs of ram so 32 bit is just fine and plus there's not going to be any issue actually with the efi which is 32 bit so that was really the reason that i just went with the easiest you know the the path of less resistance i guess of going with the 32 bit debian and so i got that all set up for my son and you know it's working just fine the battery life on the thing is is amazing and uh and he's learning how to use the system now he's learning how to use a, a linux system which is the, the whole point you know i want him to be familiar with how to use a computer and how to use a linux computer and just familiarize him with with uh, that because i think that's the way of the future i think the, the future is, is most definitely free software and linux so i want my kids to, to know about that stuff and learn about that stuff so uh, but hopefully this will be somewhat of a helpful guide if you have one of these triple ebooks which is kind of crazy to me that they made it so difficult to install alternative operating systems on because it did seem really difficult uh, just to do a, a pretty simple thing like install Linux on the machine um, so that it was a, a bit frustrating that's why I put it on the shelf for so long but I thought you know what I'm gonna go ahead and get that going and yeah so uh, pretty much it's just as for me it was pretty simple I got Debian 32-bit hit escape a bunch of times make sure it's EHCI for USB make sure secure boot is disabled and then boot from the USB. And I didn't, here's a few things I didn't actually test on the system. I didn't test the, the uh, webcam. I didn't test the Wi-Fi. 
Uh, when I did the install, I just used a USB network card because um, I prefer to plug everything into the network. Uh, I have a lot of machines and they're all on a network cable. I don't really like Wi-Fi. Um, I know that these days you can probably achieve faster speeds than a gigabit connection, uh, which is what I use on all my machines. But, uh, you know, I like having everything plugged in with a cable. It just feels more secure to me. So, or more uh, stable, I guess I should say. Not more secure, really, but more stable. So, yeah, those things I, I didn't test. I didn't test Wi-Fi, and I didn't test the webcam. Oh, and I also did not test the micro HDMI out. Uh, but I did read that it is working. So, if you have one, hopefully this helps. So, all right. Well, thank you for listening today. This is a pretty short podcast today, as usual. Uh, so, I'm going to play out the rest of the track that I brought the show in with today. And that is a track from Nathan Hale. I'm going to go ahead and play it in its entirety. And this will be actually the last, the last episode where I'm actually playing some Nathan Hale music. So, thank you, Nathan Hale, again for letting me use your music for the show. And... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get that track started. Thanks so much for listening, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>